Imagine you were given a choice to save countless lives by killing an entire city. All your loved ones beg and plead you to turn back and forget about this crazy task. But deep down, you know it's the right thing to do. There's no other way. Sure, you'll get your hands dirty, but what's a few hundred lives when tens of thousands more are at stake? What would you do, and how would you defend your actions? That's what I hope to discuss here and rationalize why one of the most legendary characters in all of Warcraft actually made the right choice. I'm Akronator, this is Unanswered, and let's dive straight into it. Anyone who's ever made contact with Blizzard's monumental fantasy franchise has more than likely seen or heard something about Arthas Menethil. Once a prince to the mighty kingdom of Lordaeron, he would eventually be led down the darkest of paths and take on the mantle of the Jailer of the Damned, the Lich King. I will be going through some of the more basic aspects to his backstory, but there is a lot of information that I'll be skipping over in favor of saving time. If you're truly interested in learning more about Arthas, I'll leave some links in the description to more complete chronicles of his lore. The story of the Fallen Prince starts out in the capital city of Lordaeron, found above modern-day Undercity, where a young Arthas was learning all he could in order to one day rule his people. He carefully studied his father, King Terranus Menethil II, and his mannerisms on how to act towards his subjects. He would eventually be taught in the art of combat by the dwarven ambassador Merdin Bronzebeard, and later be trained on becoming a paladin by the great Uther the Lightbringer. Arthas would slowly mature from a child into a young man, steadily earning the trust of his people. He made a name for himself in being kind and compassionate, albeit hot-headed and rash at times, although he made sure to never take out his anger on anyone but himself. His people deserved better than someone who could not control their temper, and Arthas made sure to give them such. From an early age, the prince had a fair respect for life and death. He had taken a horse from a local farm under his care, and eventually claimed it as his own. The steed was dubbed Invincible, and while riding together around the fields surrounding the city, that's exactly how Arthas felt. He loved this mount with every fiber of his being, which made it all the more devastating when the accident happened. During an early winter afternoon, Arthas had taken Invincible out for a ride like they had always done. Neither the freshly falling snow nor the frigid winter air deterred the pair from their fun. As the day grew late and storm clouds gathered overhead, they began to head back to the stables. Determined to end their outing with one last hurrah, Arthas guided Invincible towards an outcropping of rocks at the edge of the road just beyond the farm. The plan had been to hurdle the rocks with room to spare, land, and turn in for the night. Unfortunately, you could probably guess by this point, that's not what happened. Invincible hit a patch of ice just before the leap, causing their jump to fail. Arthas was violently thrown to the wayside, with Invincible landing square on the rocks. With his best friend in the whole world writhing in agony before him and the snowstorm picking up, Arthas didn't know what to do. He struggled with himself for some time before ultimately deciding to give Invincible the piece of death. He plunged his sword through the beast's heart, ending its misery. This event would go on to haunt the prince throughout his entire life. Throughout his upbringing, Arthas had many encounters with Lady Jaina Proudmoore, daughter of Admiral Dalin Proudmoore, ruler of Kul Tiras. Initially, they had been little more than friends, though Arthas would begin to court Jaina as the years passed. Despite her duties to her mentor, Archmage Antonidas of Dalaran, and the fact that she had also earned the attention of Prince Kael'thas Sunstrider, Arthas managed to steal her away and ultimately win Jaina's heart. The couple would be engaged before long, and they would even share a very... <coughs> intimate night together during the burning of the Wicker Man celebration. Though doubts would begin to seep into Arthas's mind, and he began to worry that everything was moving all too fast. The marriage was called off for the time being, and while things got a bit awkward for the once betrothed, the embers of passion still flickered between them. This all leads up to the time just before the start of the Third Great War, when rumors of a plague and the dead rising from their graves began spreading throughout the land. Arthas and his men met up with Jaina in the eastern reaches of Lodoran in order to investigate the validity of these rumors and see what or who was causing all the trouble. Much to their shock and horror, the undead were roaming about, thanks to plagued grain developed and distributed by Kel'Thuzad and his followers in the Cult of the Damned. While the group did manage to finish off the Necromancer, they failed to prevent the spread of the contaminated grain. This in turn traveled throughout the areas now regarded as the eastern and western plague lands before making its way to the city of Stratholme. Brought to the edge of his patience and furious at his own shortcoming, Arthas contemplated what to do with the situation. Even from the front gates, they could smell the bread being made in the bakeries of the doomed city, and Arthas knew it was only a matter of time before its streets would become completely overrun with the scourge. Backed into a corner, and with nothing else to do, the prince proposed the unthinkable, the culling of Stratholme. 
Jaina and Ruth the Lightbringer, who had met up with the pair at the city gates, were aghast at the thought. They questioned Arthas' sanity for even considering such a terrible course of action. Jaina pleaded with Arthas to wait in order to think of another way, and Uther utterly refused to go along with this plan. Arthas knew there wasn't enough time to wait around for another opportunity, and committed himself and any who would stay behind to the most gruesome of tasks. Uther and Jaina did not stand by the prince's side. They walked away and left him to his own devices. Arthas would go on to purge the citizens of Stratholm, stopping the scourge in its tracks, and learning that it was the dread Lord Malganis that was responsible for such atrocities. With so few to stand at his side and support him, Arthas would lose much of his mental stability, causing him to chase the demon to the icy reaches of Northrend. This trip, and more specifically the purging of his own people in Stratholm, would prove to be the crucial moment that sent Arthas down the wrong path. He would go on to become the first of the Lich King's Death Knights, cause countless catastrophes across the Eastern Kingdoms, and eventually merge with Ner'zhul's spirit to become the Lich King himself. But this is where I have to wonder if it was truly the culling that sent Arthas into a pit of despair and terrible choices, and if he made the right choice after all. Obviously, all the terrible crimes he committed once he landed his expedition on Northrend's shores are unforgivable, but as for what happened in Stratholm, I find it hard to argue that Arthas didn't make the right call. Given the circumstances, there really wasn't anything else they could do to prevent a legion of undead from stampeding across all of Lordaeron. I know Stratholm is still riddled with Scourge to this day, but it didn't truly become a bastion for the Lich King's forces until Arthas returned home as a Death Knight. His and his men's effort did, in fact, prevent the Scourge from gaining a foothold in the region for the time being, and it's hard to argue that anything could have been done given the restrictions of their situation. The Plague of Undeath has been shown to be fast-acting, killing and raising its victims in a matter of a few hours, meaning that there wouldn't be enough time to send for help. Jaina herself hints that perhaps her seniors in Dalaran could come up with some sort of magical remedy for the undead, but there's no feasible way that they would be capable of preparing and distributing any such cure on such short notice, especially not for an entire city such as this. And considering we still haven't seen nor heard about any such cure in the modern day Warcraft timeline, I think it's safe to say they most certainly didn't have anything to help back then. It's understandable that Uther and Jaina couldn't stomach and didn't want to take part in such a gruesome act, but their meager attempts at persuading Arthas of some other way seem to be pure conjecture. Not once do they ever actually give another suggestion, and instead shun Arthas for being the only one to have an idea, an idea that very well could have, and in fact did, work. Is it horrible that Arthas was forced to slaughter hundreds if not a few thousand innocent civilians in Stratholm because they consumed plagued grain? Yes, though they were soon going to turn into ravenous undead monstrosities and threaten every man, woman, and child in the kingdom either way. It didn't matter whether Arthas killed them before or after they turned, because they would have been lost regardless of when he purged them. And what's more is that by killing his people before they joined the Scourge, he prevented them from harming others, making it that much easier for him and his men. Granted, he didn't get too far into the city before they started turning, but at least he did manage to save some effort for his forward thinking. The only unfortunate thing for Arthas is that he was forced to live with the screams of terror as his people begged their prince to spare their already forfeit lives. If you ask me, it wasn't the culling that broke Arthas and sent him down the wrong path. It's the fact that he was abandoned by the ones he cared for most for what he believed, and what eventually proved to be, the right thing to do. It wasn't pretty, and sometimes a leader must do that which he doesn't want to, and make sacrifices. All he can hope for is that his people will stand by him, believing that what he's doing is best, and continue to move forward. Arthas didn't have that luxury. Every single person besides the soldiers that accompanied him turned their backs on the prince after they found out what he had done, despite not even considering that there was no other course of action. No one seemed to put themselves in Arthas' shoes for even the briefest of moments, and considered what they would have done in the same situation. Hell, if Uther had his way, the undead would have marched right out of Stratholm and had a culling of their own for the rest of Lodoran's people. Allow me to play devil's advocate here, and say, what if Jaina didn't abandon Arthas? Uther is characterized almost exclusively by his piousness, so I doubt he'd ever go along with the plan, but Jaina? She hesitated before walking away. She considered the possibility of staying by the man she loved and seeing his plan through to the end. Imagine if she'd entered the city with the prince and his men and experienced the same anguish. Maybe she could have prevented Arthas from losing his cool when facing Malganis. Maybe she could have convinced him not to travel to Northrend and instead wait for reinforcements before making the journey. What would have happened if the full might of the Alliance bared down on the Legion? Ner'zhul very well may have failed at finding a candidate to merge with, and his power could have faded from existence. The Third War may have been 
been avoided entirely if Arthas didn't become a Death Knight and wreak havoc on the living. Countless lives could have been saved and the entirety of Warcraft as we know it would be different. The Forsaken as a race wouldn't even exist, we'd have a handful more human settlements that didn't burn to the ground, and potentially the modern day Horde may have never survived depending on how certain events played out. But I think I'll leave that sort of theorizing for another video, and potentially someone else depending on how up to the challenge I'm feeling at any given point in time. For now though, that's all I've really got in terms of this theory, that the culling of Stratholme was the right call on Arthas's part, and that Jaina could have prevented the rise of the Lich King if she hadn't abandoned Arthas. What do you think about this though? Do you think there was some other way to prevent the Scourge from running amok besides the Purge, or do you agree with me that Arthas was right? So I hope you all enjoyed this video, and if you did, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more like it, maybe even subscribe. Links to my social media and whatnot are in the description below, and that's all the time I've got for today, so until next time, don't die.